So now that we reviewed how exponents and logarithms work and how we can manipulate those, now we can use exponential functions to express the solutions to these types of discrete time dynamicals. Okay, so remember in this previous example of the spectral area population, we have the discrete time system. Population at time t plus one is equal to r times population t. Okay, and we saw that we could write the solution to this system. Population at time t is just given by r to the t times p naught. Okay. And so, you know, we can write r as ln of r, okay? Because e and ln are, ex are inverses of each other. So then if we replace r e with this, right, so that means that r to the t is e to the ln of r, and then by law of exponents, this becomes e to the t times ln of r, right? Or maybe I'll write this as ln of r times t, okay? Because that's commonly how we'll put this, right? So r is just some number, so then ln of r is just some other number, and so then our solution we can write as p is given by t0, initial population, times e, the ln of r. Okay, so this will typically be some number that will then compute. And then our function will be p at time t is given by p at time 0 times exponential some number times time. Okay, where this is just some number right, that we can compute. Okay, and so then now that it's in this form, we can ask, you know, more specific questions. Right, so Let's do an example. Right, let's say we had the system pt plus 1 is equal to 2p. Right? The population is doubling every hour. Okay? Well, in this case, we have pt equal to p naught times e to the 2, sorry, ln of 2 times t. Okay? And so we can ask questions like when will the population reach 100? Okay, and so to answer that question, we just have to, uh, when will the population reach 100, you know, given say, that the initial population is one. Okay, so then in this case, we have 100 is equal to one times e ln of two. So we can take the logarithm of both sides so that we have ln of 100 is equal to ln of e to the ln, right? And the natural log will cancel with the exponential. So we'll be left with ln of 100, which is a number that I'll compute later. These cancel and we're left with ln, time, ln of 2 times t. So if we want to solve for t, we just divide both sides by ln of 2, right? ln of 100 over ln of 2. And that we can compute calculator, and that gives us 6.64. Okay, so 6.64 hours exactly will give us exactly 100 if we're following this through time when time is continuous. But, you know, this is a discrete system, so really this is between hours 6 and 7 because that's when we're kind of uh, observing our population in this discrete. All right, so if I switch over to GeoGebra plot, remember this is when, this is the data from the R equals two serial growth. And you can see that between hours six and seven, the population crosses. And if it's a continuous system that followed uh, this rule exactly, then it would happen at exactly 6.64 hours. Let's do another example. Or maybe this time we'll have a decreasing function. Okay. Let's say that P of T1, right? Let's say that our growth rate is 0 0.7. Okay, well then we saw that solution can be written as 
0 0.7 times P0, or we can write it with exponentials as P0 times E ln of 0 0.7 times. Okay. And so then we can ask, okay, when will this decrease? Right? When will this decrease to, let's say, 2? Right? Again, we start with 1. Uh, right. In this case, we'll start with 100. So we're, we're going to work backwards. Something happens in this population up here, and now it's, it's uh, dying off. Right, this growth rate is negative. So then if we start with 100 individuals, when will we decrease down to two, right? And so in this case, we're solving for 100, sorry, we're solving for two is equal to 100 e to the ln of 0 0.7 p. Okay, we divide both sides by 100 first. Last time we skipped that because we just had a one sitting here. So if we divide by 100, we get two over 100 is equal to e to the ln of 0 0.7 e, right? So this becomes 0 0.02 is equal to e to the ln of 7 e. So then if I take the natural log of both sides, 0 0.02 is equal to ln of e to the 7 times that becomes ln of 0 0.02 is equal to ln of 0 0.7 x time. So then t, the time at which this population will decrease from 100 down to 2, will be given by ln of 0 0.02 divided by ln of 0 0.7, which gives me, if I just put this in the calculator, gives me 10.96. Okay. And so, you know, if this was the discrete system, then this is between hours. 10 and 11, right? And if this is a continuous time system that, that followed this equation exactly all time, then it would happen at exactly 10.96. Okay? And so, you know, not every exponential function has to do with population growth. Sometimes you just find, you know, different models of different things in biology, and they use this general form their solution, right? Lots of things follow exponentials, right? So you have maybe this quantity s, you know, initial quantity amount at s0 times, you know, e to some rate times time, right? So this alpha q would take the place of our ln of r in the problem before, okay? And so when we're asking these questions like, when will the population reach this number? When will it reach that number? There are a couple particular terms that people use when they're studying these types of models, right? And so that would be the doubling times and half-lives, right? And so you may have heard these terms before. Um, but basically, you know, um, right? So when alpha is bigger than zero, right, this is going to increase exponentially, right? So this would happen when s of t is increasing, right? Then we want to ask at what point, you know, uh, at what doubling time t does s of t reach, you know, two times the original amount. Okay, and so you can ask this question when alpha is bigger than, right, because then this is growing. When, uh, when S of T is decreasing, that happens when you have alpha less than zero, right, then this becomes e to some negative number times time. So as time goes on, this exponential will get smaller and smaller. So when S of T is decreasing, you can ask about the half-life, right? which is the time t at which, you know, s of t reaches one half of the original amount, 
Okay. And so to find these, you would just apply, you know, you'd solve for uh, a half on the right or two on the right. Okay. And then you'll just set that up. So let's say alpha is positive, so S. Okay. Right. And we want to find the doubling time. Let's call it E. So then in this case, this is going to be the same no matter what our initial amount is. Right? It's only going to depend on this rate alpha. Right? So if I'm looking for S of E, right? this is going to be when I have twice the amount of original material or whatever measurement this is. Right? So this is S of 0, E to the alpha E2. Okay. So then we divide both sides by S0, and we're left with 2 is equal to E to the alpha 2. Okay, and then we just solve for T2. Let's hit both sides with natural log. E to the alpha T2. Okay. Then this tells us that ln of Q alpha T2. So then T2 is just given, right? This doubling time is given by natural log of 2 divided by alpha. And so this depends on your growth rate. Okay? And so what that means, right, if alpha is bigger, right, E2 is smaller. Right? And that makes sense, right? Alpha is bigger means that S of T grows faster. Right? So it reaches double size sooner, right? It makes sense that T2 would be smaller because that's the time at which you reach double the original amount. Okay? And then let's do, you know, the example when alpha is less than zero, right? In this case, S of T is decreasing, right? So again, we have S of T, S of zero, E to the but now alpha is negative, so this is decreasing. Okay? In this case, we want to find E1 half, right? The half life. Right? This is when S E1 half is equal to 1 half the original amount. So we use this equation, right? S of 0, E to the alpha half, the half life. We divide both sides by S naught. We're just left with half is equal to E to the alpha. Okay, and then we just solve for t a half, right? So we hit this with natural log, log of a half is equal to alpha t one half. This natural log and exponentials are inverses of one another. Okay, and so then we just solve for t one half. That's going to be ln of one half divided by alpha. Okay, so then in this this time, right, alpha if alpha is bigger, right? Again, E one half will be smaller. Right? And that makes sense. If you are having a bigger alpha, right? If this growth rate is bigger, but more negative, I mean, then um and, and and this is kind of tricky because alpha is negative, right? So you might think that this is going to be a negative number, but ln of one half is actually a negative number. So let me repeat that real quickly. Um, ln of one half is negative 0.69. Okay, so this is really you know, negative 0 0.69 over alpha. So it does give you a positive number because alpha is less than zero. Okay, so when alpha is a bigger, and I say like, you know, bigger in absolute value, then it makes this overall fraction smaller, right? And that means that, you know, S of T decreases faster, right? If you have a bigger negative growth rate, right, if the magnitude of that growth rate is bigger, then you're going to decay faster. So then you'll reach your half-life sooner. Right? So that's why your T1 half is smaller.
Okay. And so whenever you have, you know, these these exponential growth functions, right? If you have any measurement that follows a model like this, then you can solve for time just by manipulating these. And then we can ask, okay, at what time do I reach one specific value? And you know, some of the specific values we use is the doubling time and the half life, which gives you the time at which you reach either twice the original amount or half the original. Okay. Or you can ask, you know, questions about when will you decrease to some specific value, or when will you increase to some other specific value. Okay. So now that you can write them in terms of this sort of exponential function, you can solve for whatever time you reach whatever value you want. 